Good morning. It is 9.50 a.m. on Sunday, April 10th, 2016. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. So, still no Batman versus Superman, although I'm going this morning. It's not a good sign when I feel like, you know, when uh, you're planning to go see a movie and the thought crosses your mind, I just need to get it over with. But here's the thing. I don't like to not like things. People who talk about hate watching stuff just makes no sense to me. I'm going to see it because I hope that there will be aspects of it that I can enjoy and my expectations for the rest of it have been appropriately calibrated. So I am planning to go and find whatever I can to enjoy in that movie. And I expect that there's going to be some cool stuff in it. So that's the plan. It's not like I'm going to see, like, oh, I have to see this movie for some reason. No, no. I know lots of people who like it. There are going to be things to enjoy in it. And that's what I'm going to do. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I come out thinking that people are exaggerating. Um, anyway. Uh, what I will actually also update is uh, that I started watching a cartoon called Wander Over Yonder. Um, on I'm, I'm watching it on Amazon Video. I think the new ones are on, I want to say, Disney XD, I think. Um, but it's really fun. It's super silly. Uh, it's created by Craig McCracken, who has done a lot of uh, great cartoons in, like Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack and stuff like that. <clears throat> And the basic premise is it's like sort of very fantasy-ish science fiction, meaning we're flying all around to different planets and seeing all different kinds of aliens, but there's no science there really. Um, you know, there's the main characters travel around in a bubble called like verbal transport, which is basically just... He blows a big bubble that they're inside and it's like they run in the bubble and it makes the bubble move and like that's their ship. So yeah, that's the kind of world we're dealing with here. But the basic principle of the show is that we have Wander himself, who's this little orange furry guy, and he is just optimistic as all get out. And he just likes to see the world because it's you know, the universe because it's got all sorts of amazing things and people in it. And he just wants to go and help everybody he can. And it's kind of just delightful. Um, and he has um, his best friend Sylvia is like some sort of an alien horse dinosaur thing. Um, and she kind of keeps him safe sometimes because he's got a tendency to sort of just blunder into dangerous situations, um, trying to help. Um, so she's got a little bit more of a temper on her, a, more, a little bit more inclined to punch problems uh, rather than uh, look for helpful ways. And But uh, the two of them together are just going off and doing stuff, and it's great. And then they have, like, uh, this evil alien conqueror, Lord Hater, who keeps trying to conquer all these alien planets, and... Uh, is really annoyed by Wander's attitude. Um, and it's just silly and delightful, and the animation is interesting, and it's super fun, liking it a lot. Um, so the other thing that I thought I would talk about a little bit today, although I've already gotten almost four minutes in on the other stuff, uh, is I decided to switch my pre-order for VR headsets. I had originally, way back in January, ordered an Oculus. But now that both of them are out and the reviews are coming out, I've decided to switch it to the HTC Vive. And I had some... I, I will admit, before I get into the details that made me switch, that there is a part where I had sort of an emotional affection to the Oculus. There's this whole narrative there of like, oh, they were the ones that kind of got all this started again by like showing that it could be done and that sort of this little plucky upstart sort of feeling to it um, that created an emotional component to canceling that order that I had to kind of 
try to put on my rational hat and resist that feeling is that like, okay, look, we're talking about a company that was purchased for $2 billion by Facebook. It's not a plucky little upstart. They're going to be okay. They weren't counting on my order. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, the, I was, you know, I've been really excited for it and I had the Oculus, uh, development kit two model, which is, um, you know, still pretty cool. Um, but it's not as nice or fancy or well implemented as the final version. So it's definitely still going to get the final version. But with the reviews out, both of them are getting reviewed very highly. The Vive is made, uh, it's kind of in coordination with Valve, who does Steam on PC games and stuff like that. They both seem really great and in their own ways. So the HTC, so the, the Oculus basically sounds like of the two, it's the one that's sort of like just easiest to set up and just get working. It's also cheaper, but part of the reason it's cheaper is that it does not yet come with the controllers that you like hold in your hand. Oculus touch controllers are going to come later and be available, but they're not yet you know, available. Whereas the Vive is a little more expensive, it's got more stuff, but it comes, it already has the two controllers you hold in your hands. And all the reviews indicate that even though it's harder to get set up, it is better at doing what they call the room experience, where you're not even just sitting. You're, you can actually like clear a space and you walk around a, a room and you can do more of the walk around type of things. And that seems to me like, uh, so basically everyone says it's like, not everyone will have enough room to do that, but I will. And so I'm excited by that prospect. I'm excited by the prospect of going ahead and just starting up with having the controllers and, uh, and just some of the, like a lot of the games I think will will cross over and be available for both platforms eventually, but at least to begin with, some of the games that uh, come with the Vive uh, are more immediately appealing to me. And so I'm just, uh, I, I made the decision to switch. And I was worried that when I, if I was, you know, I, I had my original pre-order from January of the Oculus, and it was slated to ship in like May or June, and so I was worried, well, if I switch it to a new order for the Vive now, will that one be back ordered? When would I get it? But when I ordered it, it says it's going to ship in May. So anyway, I'm excited by that. Um, the VR stuff is really cool. Uh, you know, it, the, I think the really, it, it's, it's, it deserves to be huge. But if anything is going to limit it, it's just that it's hard when you haven't tried it yourself to understand how cool it is. It's difficult to communicate the experience. Anyway, um, I have been talking certainly more than five minutes, so I will talk to you tomorrow for five more minutes.